Okay then, here we are. The final day of well, the entire of the life story series. Uh, I didn't expect it to be where we are. It's weird, yeah. I know, it's an I know it's massive. Knee deep, mate. I know, I know, I know. Which is all right. It's all right. Part to multitude of cities. Yeah. Well, remember, we haven't put it down yet anywhere. So I mean, if that's where we think it's going to be, fair enough. But if it isn't, then we'll go and do some around. And this is what happens. Right then, should we have a walk up there and just the land, then come back and get the kit? Or yeah, there you go, yeah. Well, I've got a quick scene that I've got to film with Scott first. And then we will, yeah. But yeah, you're right, that is slightly over isn't it? Look at this, though. How good is this for the final day, isn't it? Mm. Yeah. <laughs> Three. Okay. So I'd been writing music for as long as I can remember now and having created x ray X as a solo project I wanted to see if I could produce a uh, music video basically. Uh, it's one of the crazy ideas that I sometimes get. The first chapter called Betrayal actually started out as a one-off music video. Once Betrayal had been out for a bit I thought well that seemed to go okay so I thought about making another music video. The intention of creating one-off music videos was the same with the second, which is called Choice, but after putting it together I felt that it just didn't have that usual rock band sort of feel. Uh, is it flowed quite well without the need for people sort of jumping around with guitars and stuff like that. I was speaking to Aaron Worrell who plays the guy with the dreadlocks in Choice and he suggested that I make more music videos without the rock band sections, which would tell x ray X apart from a lot of the other bands. At that point that was the only direction it was taken though, just various music videos without the rock band sections. When I look back on Choice, I think it was this video for me that really cemented my love for making music videos and uh, all that kind of thing really. Uh, the original music video for Betrayal, although I did enjoy making it, uh, just didn't have the same sort of passion really about it for some reason. Um, with choice, it was it just might have been because we had everybody all together, I don't know, but it just felt like a massive team effort uh, and it just seemed to open doors for me really. Um, even my cast had various ideas about what their characters would be doing, uh, even though at that stage they were just one-off characters for a one-off music video. We didn't know who they really sort of were, uh, we just had this guy being chased by these other guys who eventually got themselves shot. Uh, and at that point we didn't even know who actually shot them uh, so it's quite nice to have a sort of mystery around them I guess uh, I think that's probably in all fairness where the idea of linking music videos came from uh, but originally betrayal you see was nothing to do with it at all uh, it was simply a case of I've done the choice I'll create another music video uh, which went on to be called fear um, and it was just a case of we were going to be linking fear and choice together uh, developing those characters which had already been shown. Um, betrayal, if you like, at the time was completely on its own. Fear was basically the first video that I would produce that was going to be directly linked to one of my other videos, uh, which was Choice. Uh, still at that point though, all I was really trying to do was see if I could link, um, if you like, like the bad guys together. So effectively the build for fear is just to find out who those guys were uh, before they turned up in choice. 
Um, the idea about the portals in the back of the cars, I, I don't even know where my head was at it, with that, to be fair, but it just seemed to work well. Uh, to me, fear has always seemed a little bit sort of sci-fi, uh, even if it doesn't do anybody else. So creating the portals uh, and that sort of stuff just became one of those things. One of the issues I had to get past was the idea that I wanted these guys to be driving around in what would look like the same sort of style car. Um, so it looked like, you know, the same sort of fleet. Well, the problem with that is I only have one car, uh, so I had to do quite a bit of CGI uh, to make it look like I had two cars on screen at the same time. Uh, so basically I did various tests to make sure that this would happen. So when it actually comes to fear, although there is a section where two of the agents are talking to each other on the phone from different cars, it is actually the same car. Free to die. Free to One of the characters that I really wanted to develop was the agent played by Scott Denton. He hadn't appeared in any of the previous videos, but I was very quickly bringing together ideas of the direction in which he'd be going. It was because of this that I'd already envisioned him being part of the greater danger, if you like, which I coined the event in the end, where he gets knocked out by the beam that uh, the, the, the strange screens, if you like, have omitted. It was nice to know that Fear would be a middle section to the series, as I wouldn't have to rush Scott's character development, and pretty much left him as the driver uh, throughout the video, until the final scenes. And because I was already writing the next chapter which was Adaptation, I actually filmed the, the very ending of Fear and the very beginning of Adaptation at the same time. So from here, I pretty much knew where the story was going now. Adaptation would be a way of telling where the other characters originated from, such as Aaron's character and also a bit more of mine, who at the time really had only just been seen staring at monitors in, in warehouses, that sort of stuff. Um, to make this happen though, it was uh, necessary to make sure that there was a scene where Aaron appears in what looks like the same sort of environment as Joyce. Uh, in the same way that Mark Tolley and Simon Rose appear via their portal. Adaptation also introduced Harley, who can be seen here plugging in an original Xbox into a car, uh, which wouldn't actually work, uh, but it was really just a way to explain that he uh, was very clever when it came to sciences, if you see what I mean. Um, later we can see uh, that he's actually a younger version of my character, and we meet via time travel from the fire portal, which you see for the first time. Um, so yeah, as you can imagine, it's extremely difficult to explain in media that contains no words. Uh, we had to rely on kind of overacting so that people would be able to lip read. <laughs> there is basically a section where he asks me uh, if a video is of me, uh, to which that I say yes, uh, and you, which is what it's explaining that it's both of us. Uh, then I jumped through another fire portal <laughs> to emphasize this. Uh, just in case you happen to miss the fire portal when I arrived uh, during the scene where I meet him uh, for the first time uh, by the car. Get it? No? Well, good. One thing that was getting to me at the time though was a real desire to incorporate all of my works together. It was then that I decided I needed Betrayal to be the initial video for the series, but I felt that because there were still the rock band elements in it, uh, that it just wouldn't sit right with the rest of the series. So there's only one thing that I could do, which was to rewrite Betrayal with the rock band bits removed, and basically fill in the gaps with the storyline instead. This really did take some doing, but I now had a way to explore who on earth my character was and what he was doing. Now I won't bore you with the details because you can obviously watch Life Story through yourself, but I would say that every single time I jump through a fire portal, there is another section of perhaps even another chapter where I exit the same portal. I wanted my character's chronological timeline to be 100% complete. Luckily I was already writing the time sequence for the final chapter, so I knew I wanted the elements to be in both the first and the last chapters to tie them together. And that's what the scenes with Hannah Tolley, Ian Fellows and Sarah King are all about. 
Back to Adaptation's final stages then, when he wanted the characters to give an ultra dynamic performance, and Scott and Aaron worked so well together that I will always love the fight sequence at the end. It was an absolute joy to shoot. So after Adaptation and Betrayal were complete, all the chapters linked together, leaving only one chapter left to do. And this one would take some effort. The last chapter is simply about one thing, revenge, and it's basically set out in such a way so that each of the previous chapters is revisited, which was also so I knew I was tying up any outstanding loose ends. So Betrayal was just a quick revisit using the link scenes which I'd mentioned before with Hannah, Sarah and Ian, uh, but Choice on the other hand would be different. I was really excited about finally explaining who shot the agents to save the subject and it's also why I was carrying the rifle and then passed it on so you'd think it was my character until the last second twist. Fear focused on freeing the children that you could be seen from my character's warehouse monitors and allowed me to explain that these children seen on the monitors to begin with were held captive by Evo Tech Limited uh, which is effectively the evil corporation of the, uh, of the series. Next up would have been Adaptation, but in all honesty, I found it had been an explanation to the story enough, so it just didn't need any more sequences. The three remaining characters would then meet up again in the final location of Revenge. So this was where it was all going to end, but there was still a day's filming to do. I had envisioned that the way to destroy the screens would be some type of cannon. Have you got a spare cannon lying around? Well I didn't, so Aaron and I built one out of Cowan Gate cartons, bits of circuit board and a lot of spray paint. One extra prop I needed was the all important piece of Perspex, which would be Aaron's character's final demise. I think it looks great and really adds depth to his final moments. The very final scene was the long walk off. I had this in mind for absolutely ages and I believe it's an excellent finish to the project and a perfect ending to life story. That was perfect. My work here was done. Um, you don't really need me doing anything else. What was that? That's a chicken. <laughs> chicken! <laughs> hey, Az, get behind your, your bit again. Hi! <laughs> it isn't a chicken. No, it's not a chicken. <laughs> no chickens here today. <laughs> Just a moose. <laughs> yes. <laughs>